G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got an exciting video where I'm going to demonstrate a new content pack that I've released to my website. Now I know that these drag on a little bit sometimes, so I'm going to try and keep them a bit more efficient and short from now on. Anyway, let's just jump straight over to the presentation. So I've released a new content pack. Um, this one deals with MEP fixtures. In this case, I call them MEP placeholders. So they're intended for architects and typically non-MEP users to represent MEP fixtures for coordination purposes. So this is my work versus play, so BIM Guru. I'm just using this to promote on my channel. So 2020 services. So the purpose of the video is to tell you how you can purchase, uh, quickly demonstrate to you, and just talk about future products very briefly. Um, don't feel pressured to buy this content. Um, it's only if it helps you in your everyday work. Um, you don't have to buy it just because you like the channel. Use it if you need it. So it's currently $50, um, but it's 20% off down to 40. Um, and I'm not planning any future discounts at the moment. Um, you can purchase it by going to my website, um, bimguru.com.au, and just hover over to the store icon. And you'll find it here in the top left at the moment, um, as well as other content that I've released in the past. And you can find the description, some images, and just what, what's actually in the pack before you purchase it. And you will need a website account in order to purchase. And there's a lot of other products on the website now. I think there's seven content packs now, and also my template and support files. But I'll give you a quick demonstration of what's actually in it and sort of some of the features of the elements that are contained in it. So it comes with a Revit project file and also a family library. I'm just going to show you the project file because it contains all the families. So in the project file, um, as well as all my little sort of descri description views, I also include some content views. Now in this case I have a floor plan and an RCP because some of this content is ceiling fixed. Let's just go to the floor plan first. So essentially all the content's just based in two rows in this pack. Um, it doesn't look like much, but there's quite a lot contained in these elements. So in this case, I have electric equipment. Um, these are very basic. Basically, I've got a server rack that can have the doors toggled on and off. Um, I find these really useful when you're trying to test fit a comms room, or you're just trying to maintain a layout in an architectural model for a comms room. I've also got a solar panel that you can change the angle and the size of. So in 3D, I'll show you that you can actually change that tilting angle. I then also built a power or a floor box um, that can be placed on a table or in a floor and also got a whole bunch of call buttons. Now you'll notice that some of these elements have a symbolic representation. So in this case, if I change my scale, you'll see that there are actually some symbols located in these elements. Obviously they're tagged at the moment, but the symbols should always grow away from the wall for a wall mounted fixture. So in this case, all my call buttons use this standard little symbol here. I've also got um, push buttons, which always have a little arrow pointing at the wall so that you can see the push button itself. And these should typically only be shown at fine detail level. So a little trick you can use in Revit is that if you ever want to just override the detail level of one category of elements, you can just go to the visibility graphic settings. And in this case, most of my fixtures are electrical fixtures, and you can just override the detail level of that particular category to course. And everything else can still be fine, but you can override this, this element of the, of, of the family. So in this case, I've also got a card reader with the standard symbol. Um, I've also got light switches. Now notice that in the case of the light switch, it's one family, but it has multiple symbolic representations. So I've included some fairly simple, but easy to communicate symbols. So you can see, for example, you have a one-way switch, uh, a single switch with two ways, three ways, a, a double switch and a triple switch. Um, as well as that, we also have a set of GPOs. So we have singles, essentials, UPS, and also uh, double, single, um, essential, and UPS. And we also have uh, three-phase outlets as well. So I've, I've put in at least the most common types of outlets you'll need as an, as an architect in coordination. You may just need a single and a double outlet. That might be enough. As well as that, I've also got a single, double, and triple uh, data outlet. But as well as this, if I go to elevation, they are actually graphically representing the number of switches they contain. So if I go to my call buttons, I can see that they're all pretty much the same because they're just a standard call. Um, if I do go to shaded view, um, in this case, they do actually have colors. So you can tell them apart in a rendering. So if you're doing a healthcare project, it's really easy to tell someone what type of call button you're pointing at based on its color. You can see here I've got uh, all my push buttons and my card reader. I've got my uh, power switches. So in this case, you can see that we have single, double and triple. And in the case of my power and my data outlets, I've added the tick box that you can just tick on and off 
To change the orientation of the family on an instance basis, you can always rotate the outlet the other way if you want. As well as this, I've also got, uh, in this case, my I've got my power outlets. So you can see that you also get the uh, the plug symbol. In this case, it's the Australian plug symbol. Um, but I also have my data outlets as well with their, their respective data outlet. And again, I can rotate I can rotate this uh, using that is horizontal tick box. And I can also change their mounting height on an instance based parameter. But as I said, this is all just contained in single family. So all my data is together and all my power is together. So inside these families themselves, there's actually some fairly intelligent symbols nested inside them. So I use, um, in this case, nested generic annotations, and they have all sorts of tick boxes connected up to just a base set of parameters in the outlet family itself. So is it essential? Is it UPS? Is it three phase, etc.? And then how many outlets are in each respective, um, and then they update to suit how many outlets it has. So I've used a lot of nested symbology, which saves people a lot of time in having to not use multiple families with single symbols each. Um, as well as that, I've also included a lot of RCP content. Um, so you can't actually see much of it in floor plan. Um, you can see some of it. So in this case, I have just some free freestanding lamps. Um, and I also have some suspended down lights. In this case, you can set them without a ceiling. And also just a linear pelmet light that I include in all my casework for Overbench. But if I go to ceiling plan, you'll see that we actually do have quite a few ceiling fixtures as well. So in this case, we have some fire related fixtures um, like smoke detectors, alarms, uh, temperature sensors, and sprinklers, which are all ceiling mounted or ceiling hosted. And then we also have some ceiling recessed equivalents. So we'll have a look at those in 3D and just show you what they look like uh, pretty soon. I also have ceiling mounted and wall mounted security cameras and person in room detectors with symbology. And then these are those uh, those uh, suspended lights. And these ones, you can actually change the mounting height and also the ceiling height of the fixing point. So if you're, if you're hovering it over a table, you can change the mounting height in 3D. Um, I've got a ceiling fan, a, a exit sign with um, actual graphical exit symbology on it for 3Ds. And then also just some, some linear uh, truffer or recessed truffer lights and some recessed down lights and emergency lights. I've then also got a swell diffuser. Um, a 600 by 600. I've got a set of access panels, um, in this case 6x6, 450 by 450 and 6x12. And I also have um, wall mounted diffusers, supply and return with their, sim their symbols, and also supply, return and, and uh, narrow return ducts. So quite a wide range of fixtures. Um, if I go into 3D and I just go and grab a look under the ceiling, You'll see that you do actually get a decent 3D representation of the element as well. So you can see the sprinklers actually look like sprinklers. So if I go to shader mode, they look they look relatively good for rendering. So it should be easy to tell your client what like a, a fixture actually is when you see it. You can see here we have the recessed uh, speaker, uh, the recessed sprinkler, and in this case, uh, the recessed smoke detector. You can see also my security cameras. Obviously I've mounted my wall camera a little bit too high there. <laughs> Now I've put my lights in a box because I've got a little demo view that shows you that actually do they do cast light. Um, but I've also got my ducts as well. And if I go to realistic mode, you can see that you actually do get a relatively decent looking uh, looking duct, and you get a plasterboard access panel. And the sort of fuser actually does have a 3D representation, as well as the um, the linear slot diffusers on the wall. So it's it's a pretty decent preview if you do like a 3D rendering, say in Enscape. Now if I go and check out my lights and I put this into realistic mode. You can see that my lights do actually cast light properly. Now this is a really common problem with a lot of lights that people make, that the lights don't work or they don't look convincing enough. Um, I'll go to my other view as well and I might just go into ray trace mode because in this case my lights also glow um, in a rendering or in a program like Enscape, which makes them look a lot more convincing. So I've used a special material in this case in order to achieve this. Um, so this might be a good a good learning resource to show you how you can set up convincing lights for 3D, uh, 3D views as well, as well as just having a base set of fixtures you can use. Um, so essentially that's all that's in the pack, uh, but it's a lot of really handy little elements that I find that I use quite a lot when I'm coordinating with uh, engineers. So hopefully you find them useful as well. This presentation will be on GitHub as always, um, but the files themselves are on, on my website. So thanks for watching today. And if you have any queries about the product or any of my other products, feel free to let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll be aiming to release ideally one pack per week for a while. Um, we'll see how I go. Anyway, uh, if you're not already following and subscribing to the channel, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future non-promotional non videos. Thanks, take care.